All right, Sean Zatel again joined with my man Tim Bradley. We talked about a lot of this Lomachenko tank Shakur situation at lightweight a few days ago, but my man Tim has some some other thoughts to unpack. Tim, man, it's it's been a few days to kind of reflect and gather thoughts on uh, Loma and Tank being off the table. Uh, what do what, what, what some uh, what are some of the things that have been crossing your mind? Well, like this word that's been used, and, and I touched on it earlier, like you said, um, duck that he ducked. You know, I thought about it, and I'm thinking like, you know. I was hard. On, I was hard on Fury when when he the no negotiations kind of fell through uh, with Usyk. So I gotta I gotta stay, you know, neutral across the board, man. I gotta be fair across the board. You know, you you want to call this a duck? It's a duck. There's no doubt about it. it. It's literally a duck. But I I think it's something deeper, man. And I keep saying that, but uh, because Loma's the type of guy that don't duck any smoke. However, when I when I look at him and how he's been behaving as of late. I think about the fact that this isn't only once, this isn't one time, this is twice. Now, Shakur Stevenson, I believe, was, you know, was a part, well, Shakur Stevenson was a part of, you know, top rank at Loma. Um, Shakur wanted that fight. You know, there was no way that top rank was on, I, I guess they couldn't, uh, Loma said they didn't want the fight, you know, pretty much said it, you know, I didn't want the fight right now. Um, so not only did he <laughs> duck Jacor, he also duck Tank. Um, I think Loma knows that again, like I tell you guys all the time, fighters, we know, we know, we know what we can do, what we can't do. Um, Loma, I'm sure, and his team don't want him to, to go out one on his shield, getting knocked out or getting embarrassed. Um, he fought Cambosis because that he knew that was a fight that he can win and he can win a belt. Um, and go out on a high note. I, I think that this is it for Loma. I, I don't think Loma returns. Um, and I only say that because this is the type of the guy that don't duck any smoke. You know, he fought against uh he's fought against Lopez, Linares, he fought against Haney. Um, and speaking of that, I mean the last couple of fights that he's had has been, you know, really close competitive fights. Um, the Haney fight um, definitely put a dagger in him, man. It really did. He felt he won the fight. Many, many people watching felt that he won the fight. Um, I thought it could have went either way. You know, I, you know, I thought Haney could have won the fight. I thought he could have won the fight. It was a very close fight, but deep down inside, he felt that he won the fight. Um that does something to a fighter, man. Uh, it really does. And when you have like a couple of close calls like that, man, you say to yourself, "F this, f this game." You know what I mean? Like, forget that. And going into a tank fight, if he puts up a hell of a performance, right? Don't get knocked out. Let's say he wins the fight, he he probably already thinking like, you know, tanks the guy. He's the younger guy. You know, he's using me for he's using me for my legacy. I know that. You know, you start when you're in this game, you start to realize, man, you're just a piece of meat. <laughs> you just that's it. You, you literally, you're just a piece of meat because you're like you an know, asset on the stock market. But yeah, as of right now, yeah, your stock is high, but when your stock is low, it is. You put to the side, you know, nobody's investing in you, man. So, but I, I just, you know, I think that has a lot to do with it too, man. The fact that, you know, things hasn't been as fair for him, he feels it ain't been fair here in America. Um, and you know, that can definitely persuade you and, and keep you away and, and not have you motivated, you know, to, to return to boxing. But I think this is a, a silent, like I'm done, you know, this ain't not a, he hasn't officially retired, but yeah, his nature as a fighter gone. I mean, when you, when you don't want to compete against the best anymore, man, it, it times up, it's a wrap, put a fork in you. You know, um, if you don't feel that you can hang with the best, with Tank, put a fork in you. It's done. You're done. That's it. So it's going to be hard to return, man. It's going to be hard to return. If he was to return, it's going to be really hard to return, you know, back to the sport. So we'll see. But I, I think I think Loma, lightweight, retired, bro. Without Without saying it, he retired. You know, if, if that's actually the case, like if Lomachenko walks away from the sport, um, it you know, what do you think of this? It, it reminds me of like what came to mind 
when I was thinking about it yesterday was a little bit of Marvin Hagler. And, yeah. you know, Marvin Hagler had three times as many fights as well. Like, I'm not saying Loma is going to wind up in the Hall of Fame al alongside mm -hmm. Marvin Hagler, but, you know, I, I get it. Loma's not marvelous Marvin Hagler, but he's a great fighter in his own right. And, you know, Hagler, he left a, a potential rematch with Leonard, which he probably would have made back in the 80s, you know, well over 10 or $15 million. Yeah. But he felt, you know, he didn't like how he was getting treated by the business at that point. And he said, you know what? I'm out. I'm going to go retire to Italy. I made enough money. Is that, is there a little similarity there here with Lomachenko? If that's the I case. Think, yeah. I, yeah. Yes. And no, I, I think that, you know, the ending, the ending part, the fact that he felt that he beat, um, Sugar hey. Ray Leonard oh, and oh. he didn't, and he didn't get, he didn't get that decision. You know, um, he, he had to wait. He had to wait so long. Um, to even fight him, you know, um, I think that had a lot to do with it. And then just, again, the politics of the sport, man, how long did it take him to get even a title shot, man? It took him forever, man, to get a title shot Hagler, and, actually yeah. did, and then actually win it. So after a while, man, you do what you, you do what's right. And you fight the guys they put in front of you. You fight the best guys, you knock them out, you beat them, you know, and you still don't get a title shot after a while. You just start getting sick of the, the politics in the sport, man. You know, you, you you know you know who the you know who the who the uh who the sport wants to win after a while, bro. You start to figure that out. You know, it's whoever's making the money yeah. at the end of the day. You know, and that's and that's just what it is. It's a business, and whoever's generating more money, the younger fighter, they want them to win. That's just that's just how it goes. Can you, let, well, again, and and we don't know if Loma's really going to step away from the sport, but like. You know, so much uh, talk about boxing and sports, it turns into the wins and losses and the money and the narratives that I, I feel like in this sport, people lose track of just sometimes how, how tough it is. And like, it's just because like, we talked about this last time. I remember Sean the morning after the Crawford fight and, you, you know, people might people on the outside might be thinking he's thinking about, uh, man, should my dad not have stopped the fight? I lost to the fight. He was just happy that after all those years of fighting and the amateurs and the pros, that it was over. You know, I saw relief come over the man. He was just at peace and happy. Um, could you, is, did you feel the same kind of thing when you walked away? Because you walked away with fights still on the table too. You, you, you could have still fought some other welterweights. Maybe, I don't know, maybe a Kell Brook, maybe a Jesse Vargas, maybe in a rematch or something. You know, there was still, there was still money to be made, but you ultimately said, I'm good. Can you kind of just take me through that moment as a man and as a fighter and relating to it? Man, look, it was it, the, probably the hardest decision I ever made. Mm -hmm. um, when you're getting those big checks, man, and, you know, one night, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to really, you know, uh, to, to even think about, it, you know, like, how can I make that type of money? You know, so that becomes addicting. Um, but it got to a point to where I just, just got sick of just training. I got sick of working out. I got, you know, my body would ache. Um, I physically felt like I couldn't do it anymore. Um, again, punch resistance uh, was less. You know, I felt less of myself and I knew it. Um, and I knew that, you know, if I didn't retire, and like, I think it was like the last four or five fights, I, I always ended up in a hospital, bro. My face was starting to swell a lot faster. Um, you know, I started breaking down and I started to feel it. So... I was like, man, if I stay in this sport, the sport going to retire me. One of these little young bucks or somebody going to come up, I'm going to get knocked out, you know, get embarrassed. I just said, figure, you know, I figured like, you know what? If I can have these three things, I'll retire. And I just had a conversation with my wife and I just told her, look, you know, I'm contemplating it. And I've been out of the ring for, I think it was somewhat over a year. It was when HBO was no longer, you know, picking up any fighters. They had a certain few guys that they were just uh, willing to uh, promote at the time. Um, so, you know, I was sitting, just sitting still and I knew when to come back was going to be tough. But, you know, when I sat down and I really thought about it, I was just like, ah, it's going to be even rougher coming back. I mean, I was offered a fight, uh, Jose Ramirez, mm. uh, at 140 pounds. You know, I was, I was contemplating about fighting him, uh, at 140 pounds and fighting him in Fresno, uh, and dropping back down. Um, but, 
I thought about it. And I was just like, you know, nah, I'm I'm good. I I don't feel like rebuilding. You know, after yeah. that pack out loss, I just said, you know what, I'm done. I'm done. My body doesn't doesn't feel the same anymore. I'm done. But the three things that I had the conversation I had with my wife was was like I just told her, look, these are three things that I need. If I can, if I can, because my wife handles the finances, so I'm like, if I can have these three things, I'm good. And so I just said, I want first class tickets. You know, I don't need to fly, 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 uh, fly private, private or anything like that. I don't need to do that. Nah, nah, nah. Domestic, oh, good. No, first class. I fly overseas. I got to be first class. It's just, it's just what it is. I felt like it. I deserve that, right? Yeah. And I said, good food. You know, I like to eat. You see how big I am. I like to eat. I'm a foodie. I like to travel. I'll travel and eat. I'll, you know, um, you know. But I, I, I if I want to go to a four or five star, you know, uh, dinner, right? It, it don't matter. It doesn't matter. I can go five if I if I want to go five days a week. I can go five days a week. It don't matter. But I gotta have that. You, you know sound what like mean? Keith Thurman now. I remember Keith Thurman said that. He goes, they said, what does boxing mean? He says, boxing means I get to eat a nice steak every night if I feel like it. That's what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, what... ah, that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And but... then, and then uh, one last thing is this four or five star hotels. You know, uh, not every hotel is a five star. You can't but, get a you Best know, Western five... every now and then. They're not that bad. A little Best Western Bruh. down there. Gotta be if that's the only thing in the area, and that's the only yeah. thing I can do. I mean, that's what it is. You know, I do got an RV that's that's pretty pimp. So, okay. I mean, if it's nearby, I'll I'll drive. You, know, you like but, meet, uh, you like Robert De Niro and meet the Fockers. You got you got <laughs> flagged out <laughs> RV. You go, okay. <laughs> hey man, I can drive that RV, bro. I I really enjoy it, man. So, um, but and just five or four or five star hotels, bro. Yeah. You know, I, I, comfort is all I'm after. You know, I felt that I've I've done enough in the sport to be able to get receive that comfort, you know, from here on out. I sacrificed enough. So that's just it. And my wife said, done. I said, I'm retired. <laughs> I was like, we'll announce it. <laughs> Let's announce it. So, but that was it, you know. Um, it's crazy because I was just, I was supposed to retire like three years earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, after after getting my exam, I had a, a brain scan. Um, I had a, a color MRI of my brain and you know, went through the concussion specialist, like this went through this, like, uh, this, uh, it was in like Pittsburgh. Um, and I saw like a, a bunch of doctors did a whole bunch of tests. It was crazy. Um, you know, it's like the football concussion, uh, center out in Pittsburgh, bro. It's crazy. Right. And they told me they, you know, they sh showed me my brain and, you know, all the activity in it. And I was just like, damn, and was, I was like, yo, why is that missing? Where, where is that at? Why? So uh, I was blown away when I looked at it. I was like, "Damn, I like where the connections at there, you know?" And they're like, "They're no longer there." And I'm just like, "Holy moly!" They're like, "You should think about retirement." And I was just like, "Nah, they got a couple more, a couple more." So I stayed like three years longer in the game because I was just like, "Nah, I want to put away a little bit more. I want to put away a little bit more." You know, I saved a lot of my money, invested a lot of my money in like houses. So I, that's what I did. I used houses as a saving account because like when you got money just sitting in the bank and, you know, you're not getting much interest on it, it ain't doing nothing for you. Mm -hmm. So I just figured like it's it's money in the bank, but at least, you know, the housing market will increase, you know, and if I pay the house off cash, you know, um, I just got to pay the taxes on the property. And then when I get a renter in there and I'm dead, and then they just paying me gravy. When I want to sell it, if I need to sell it to get money, I could sell it for double or triple of what it's worth, you know, when the time I sell it. So I get my money back and some. Of course, I got to pay capital gains on it, but it's it's all worth it. It's a win-win for me, you know, but I, I got rid of a lot of my money just buying houses, buying houses buying, and buying them cash. I wasn't one of those guys that that uh, that uh would buy, like, have 40 houses, but I don't own them. I own all my cribs, every last one of them. So, um. And I got, I got, I got quite a few, <laughs> I got quite a few cribs, bro. So, well, Lola's but yeah, got his hotel, right? So the, you start. Well, your... we don't know. We don't know. I mean, uh, dude, the war it might got blown up. You don't know. You know, like, you know, well, I'm not over there. I don't know what that guy. You know, I don't know what he's going through. You know, you put all the stress on top of that, two family and friends and stuff. You know, fighting in the war, getting killed. You know, I mean, dude. 
my, my look, my hat goes off to Loma on another note, man. My hat goes off to him. I hope things is okay. If he if he decides to hang him up, man, it is what it is. You know, he had a great career. Uh, he's made his money. He's made his mark. He's made his history. He didn't accomplish his last goal. That's fine. You know, that's fine. That yeah, yeah. But you did accomplish a lot, and you've revolutionized the sport. You know, the sport is different because of Loma now. Um, and it's crazy fast tracking guys. If they had a yeah. big time yeah. amateur background, get them yeah. right to title fights. Yeah. I mean, look, we got Noya anyway, who's fighting for the fall for the world championship. I think it's like third or fifth fight or something. I think Might it's six fight. Might I, been like six, six fight. Something like that. You know, six, but you got, like you got all these guys trying to contend for a world championship a lot faster now. And then you got a lot of guys that's trying to emulate, uh, Loma's footwork. You know, they're trying to emulate his footwork and, and you know, when you have that type of fact, man, that's that's that you that's legendary status right there, man. Right. When people try to emulate your style. Like you know, Bam, now you, now you guys got... like Bam, Emiliano Vargas. These are young guys I've seen try to do the lead foot, the, the, the little, yeah. little little tricks. Some put yeah. some of those Lomachenko yeah. tricks in there. Yeah. Yeah, little front foot step shuffles. So and back foot too. But you know, then you got you got the new era now, it's the Crawford era, the Bud era. So mm -hmm. You know, you know when you transcend the sport, when you have all the youngins that are trying to be you, and 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 they emulating you, like Roy Jones. You know, he was like Abdullah Mason with Bud right now. He, he reminds yeah. me, yeah, looks like a like yeah, 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 yeah. Same thing, man. So you know, uh, and then look at Boots. <laughs> I mean, Boots is like uh, Crawford. You know, um, so yeah, man. Um, but anyways, that's I mean, that's that's pretty much. That's pretty much what you go through. You think about everything that you've done throughout the sport. Um, family becomes more important. Your priorities change as a fighter. Um, getting up and running and training as hard as you is no longer fun. And once once it's no longer fun, you know, and you're no longer motivated to do it, your career is over. That's when you know it's done. So that's that's I think I think I'm telling you right now. I think we may not see Loma. Ever again, I think that Cambosis win, that emphatic win that he that he won in in that fashion. I think that's how he wants to be remembered. He doesn't want to be remembered looking up at the lights, bro. You know, so uh, that's his prerogative. Um, I respect it. It is what it is. Um, at the end of the day, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future, man.